Hey there, my name is Antoine, and today I wanted to do something special. 15 years ago, a little show debuted on Nickelodeon. That show was Avatar The Last Airbender. Since its premiere, it's captured the imaginations of children, teens, and man-children. And it now stands as the best animated series according to IMDb and several review platforms. The franchise has gone on to spin off to other TV shows, comic books, novels, <coughs> movie. <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I had something in my throat. To celebrate this anniversary, I wanted to do a little video, a little bit of a retrospective, uh, putting me in the scenario of the next Avatar. Let's say that it's a new series, I'm the next Avatar. It uh, doesn't matter if I'm Earth, Water, Air, that, that doesn't really, that's irrelevant to what, the, what I'm doing today. But if I was next Avatar, who would I choose as my next four ambassadors? Between air, water, earth, fire, like who would I choose to be in my team avatar? But in this case, I get to choose whoever I want in the entire franchise. I'm not limited to whoever is living in that current time and era. So I can choose anyone all the way back from Avatar 1 all the way through to Avatar Korra and anyone in between. But I didn't want to do this alone. So I reached out to some other YouTube channels that have avatar content and I asked them if they would be willing to do this project with me which I am calling four legendary masters together we are all choosing our team avatars and hopefully we'll have some differences though I'm sure there's gonna be some overlap especially on a certain character but I do want to see what our opinions are what we think about each individual master how those masters would interact with each other and how that would affect us as the next avatar I will determine if a mentor is good for me based on if I personally vibe with that personal hypothetical mentor and if I think they jive well with the team avatar that I put together because I think that's important too. So without further ado, let's set the stage. The White Lotus has come to my house. They tell me that I'm the next avatar and I get to choose anyone I want to be on my team avatar, dead or living. Who are they going to be? So it's probably no surprise that if I got to choose which fire bending master I wanted, I would choose Iroh. I'm sure I'm not alone in that. It's very hard pressed to pick anyone else. I did kind of um, debate a little bit with John John, but he's a little bit too much of a downer for me. And he's a little bit too steadfast, uh, I feel, especially when you have Iroh as a choice, I'm definitely gonna side with, with Iroh. Maybe there, there was some Zuko in there, but I don't know how much I would like him as a mentor as just maybe like a buddy or something like that. But Iroh for sure, like beyond just a firebending master who can teach me the ways of firebending, a little bit of lightning redirection, um, he just has a wisdom that I think a mentor should have. And in terms of my team avatar, I would have him as the firebender, as the wise, the wise firebender. He'd be the wisdom guy in my group, the guy I wanna go to for maybe like life lessons beyond just what I'm doing in my bending. And the great thing about Iroh, I kind of liken him between a Mr. Miyagi and a Yoda. Mr. Miyagi in the sense that the way that he taught Daniel LaRusso from the Karate Kid movies, if you've seen those, is that the reason that we learn to fight is so that we don't have to. And I feel like Iroh is in that, you know, kind of ballpark where he says, or I would think he would say or agree with Mr. Miyagi in that we don't really train to fight to exert our will over someone else or to be the aggressor in a situation. We learn to fight so that if it gets to that point, we can stomp it out. Or because we are so skilled or someone knows that we're, you know, the better in that regard, they won't want to do anything about the situation. So I like that philosophy of, of learning to fight, not because we want to, you know, be bullies, but because we want to protect. And then with regards to Yoda, um, you know, I think back to Empire Strikes Back and how Yoda describes the force and how we're all connected and how it's in everything. That is the same way that Iroh would speak to the spirits in the world of Avatar and how everything is connected and how there is a balance to, to the world. And it's the reason why he is so renowned and so great as he is. It's the reason why he was able to figure out lightning redirection is because he was able to look at the influence of waterbenders or the reason that he was able to you know, just jump into the spirit world is because he is so in tune. And I think I would need that. Uh, any Avatar, team Avatar needs that kind of energy. You need someone who is spiritually inclined and generally that's going to be the airbender usually uh, but Iroh I think fits that bill uh, pretty well um, you also are gonna want someone who is you know has great wisdom um, beyond just the bending itself but bringing that worldly wisdom into the bending arts itself I think is is going to be a, a great fit for any team avatar so definitely Iroh would be my fire bending master Ooh. 
So next up on my list was kind of hard, really because there's not really a lot of airbending masters that we've seen in the series itself. You really have the choice of maybe like four, maybe five if you're looking at the Kyoshi novel, but, or if you're looking at avatars themselves, maybe you want an avatar to be just your pure, you know, airbending instructor. Uh, but I went with Guru Lahima. Now that might seem kind of strange because he's kind of, I would say in antithesis to Iroh, but that's kind of the reason why I want him on my squad. I would like to see how they would kind of clash in philosophy, what their debates, what that would bring forth, and, and how I would be influenced by that, by seeing how they are interacting with each other. But as you guys know with Guru Lahima, he is shrouded mostly in mystery, um, and he's mostly just, we know about him through his poems, uh, the poems of Lahima, which were mostly recited by Zahir because Zahir is a total Lahima uh, fanboy and that's the reason I didn't really choose I here because I think he's a bit too radical and I didn't choose Aang because I feel like he would be overly permissive uh, as an instructor I need I would probably need a little bit more regimen and with Aang even as I kind of if you see how he was with his children I don't know if he would be the best instructor for me and then for um, Tenzin Similar to Korra, I would have a similar reaction to her and the way that he's so dogmatic about the airbender way and this is like traditional uh, discipline and this is how it has to be done. I would probably have a little bit of a fight back on that because I would want to be a little bit more freeing, which is why I chose someone else for my other team avatar, which I'll speak on later. But yeah, I kind of landed on Guru Lahima. Um, really just to, just to kind of throw a wrench in, in there and just so I can get different ideas out of my team avatar rather than the same like wise wisdom kind of and you know shtick going on and also uh, Lahima was a, a radical thinker for him to even um, enact an ability that everyone at the time thought was impossible and that no one replicated for another almost 4,000 years in the Avatar universe uh, not that I want to like learn flight or I'm into you know his philosophies of burning everything down and and and, and that sort of thing but I do want to be challenged by a master in that way so I can have a more well-rounded training regimen at the end of the day. So yeah, Guru Lahima will be my airbending uh, master mostly because I don't really have too many choices and also I am sort of intrigued by his philosophies, uh, his different way of thinking within the Avatar universe and I think he would play a pretty interesting dynamic within my team Avatar. So for this next one, I will probably say I'm going to go with Katara as my waterbending master instructor. I also was debating between her and Udenlok. Udenlok mostly because of the uh, spirit bending and also I do like his technique as a waterbender. Uh, it's got a lot of precision to it and he does a lot with very little resources of water uh, most times. And he's pretty ingenious in the way that he uses um, waterbending. One of my friends, Matthew Chapman, uh, who is also should be part of this video series, but if he's not, then oops, I'm sorry. Sorry, I mentioned him and he's not in it, but he should be. He should be making his own video. One scene in particular that he brings up a lot is his fight, Unlock's fight with Tonrock, where, well, if I, I'm not remembering it correctly, if I'm not, I'm sorry, but he puts up, I believe, a water wall and then throws ice daggers through it. And that is really ingenious because you're, what you're doing is you're cloaking your moves. And, I, and I, I need, I think I would need an instructor that would do that sort of a thing, but at that same token, I do feel like this group of Team Avatar does need that nurturer and that rock. And that's what Katara was for Aang, and I, I, I wouldn't need that. If I'm too hard pressed against like maybe Guru Lahima's like radical thinking, I'm like, ah, I don't, I can't deal with you today. I would need a Katara to be there and be like, hey, it's gonna be all right. Let's have some, you know, instruction where, uh, she's being more of a nurturer, more of a mother to me. Uh, I, I would need that kind of spirit. Not to mention that Katara is probably the most powerful waterbender in the series. Um, I do have my own grievances about that in terms of like storytelling and plotting and things like that. I think some of the kids progress too quickly as benders um, and they all like, it just seems like Aang happens to have be friends with all the prodigies of the time but again that's more of like a, a storytelling grievance if i'm looking at it in world i can't deny that she is one of the best binners ever and not to mention that she is gonna be able to teach me effectively i think i think i would respond to her best uh, maybe second best depending on how i interpret that on my other my last choice for my earthbender master but i feel like she's someone who i who can listen to me i mean same same with iroh iroh can listen to me but sometimes the way he speaks in, in, in his wise terms can be a little bit too uh, aloof at times i mean he can be grounded for sure but sometimes those you know very simple philosophical sayings can come off being a little bit just 
not as down to earth as I feel like Katara would for me. So I think she would be that nice balance and also, you know, I'll get to learn some masterful water bending without, you know, wanting to pull my hair out and that sort of a thing. So yes, for sure, Katara would be my water bending master. <laughs> And to round out my team avatar, my last choice for my earth bidding master would be Su Yin. Uh, I did have a really hard debate with Earth. There's a lot of good um, examples you have from Earth. There's great benders like King Bumi, you have Toph, uh, most recently you had Lao Ge from, from the Kyoshi novel. But then you also have Jiansu, who I really, really, really liked, um, especially in, in the way that he played the political game, because I think that's an important facet. Wow, even me talking about it right now, I'm thinking maybe Jiansu should be my earth bending master and not Suyin. Ooh, because I am kind of missing that political upholding. Oh, I think I'm going to change it. Okay, you know what? I'm going to change my answer. I'm going to change my answer right here on the spot on camera. So here, I'll explain why I did Suyin at first. And yeah, Su Yin kind of has overlap. Okay, so the thing is, I picked Su Yin because I felt like she was a very progressive earthbender. Um, and she always wants to see the best out of you. And the best out of you in your own way, in your own path. And you can see that by the way she raised her children, how she raised them to be individuals. Like you had her artistic son and then you had her, her boys who created their own game. You know, she, she lets people flourish underneath their own, their own weight. And I guess by that regard, she does become an, a second nurturer, which is a little bit too much overlap with Katara, which is why right now I'm going to switch it to Jiansu. I think I'm going to have Jiansu because I already have that facet kind of, you know, there for Katara. Katara is very similar in that I think she will let me do my own thing within her teaching regimen. But Jiansu would teach me the political game of being an avatar. And I think that's something that's overlooked quite a lot in Avatar because it's mostly action adventure. It's about, you know, fighting all the time. It's one of the failings that Korra had, um, you know, is that she wasn't very politically minded. She wasn't good at, you know, putting the nat nations together. Um, and Jiansu is all about that. He's all about the machinations of putting this player here and there just to make sure that everyone is appeased and that everything's right. Now granted, he did it in a bad way because he is the antagonist of that book. But again, you know, if I have the this entire team avatar of like an Iroh who can who can rein him in or I have Lahima who who has probably some different insights about what he thinks about, you know, political structure and that sort of a thing. And then I have Katara and I can have these people debate and I can choose from their debate what is best for me, I think that's a pretty good team avatar and I think that he would fit nicely into that socket. Um, and also, you know, of course, he's a he's a great bender. He, he's uh, definitely talented. He'll teach me in that regard. I, for me, I don't think this should rest mostly on just bending ability. I think it should be more than that because being the avatar is more than just, you know, oh, I can bend all elements and I can just like shut you down. It really is about keeping the nations together, keeping the peace between the spirits and the human realms. And I think that Jiansu in particular will help me with that regard. And then the overall basis of this team works really well together and presenting different facets uh, from bending arts, from uh, philosophy, from political intrigue and philosophy. I think that would work really well. Uh, I, I like that. I like Iroh the Wise, I like Lahima the Radical, Katara the Nurturer and the Rock that holds everything together, and then La, um, uh, Jiansu as like the political master who can teach me the ways of being an avatar day to day. So yeah, that is my list of the four legendary masters, my team avatar if I was the next avatar and I had the choice of anybody in the entire franchise, that is my team. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What are your top four masters? And also um, beyond just the scope of in the comments below, I would love it if you guys did this as a video response. Um, I would love to see you guys do your own video about your four favorite masters, what your team avatar will be, why you would choose those four masters, um, and what they would do for you as the next avatar. But as always, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace, love, and remember, be water, my friends.